Hello, I'm assuming you have watched the first video on the introduction to this course. So we'll just move on so into the um, historical accounts of the discovery of DNA as a genetic material. Um, it started off with, well, this one is just to, to, to see where um, the findings of um, uh, the father of genetics, the Mendel, Mendel, Gregor Mendel, how is it important uh, in terms of its influence towards uh, molecular genetics. He, from his analysis, uh, he was able to show that uh, there are factors. If you look back at the laws of segregation and laws of independent assortment, it says that uh, these factors occur in, uh, in, in pairs. And in the process of um, uh, gamete formation, it uh, segregates. And this is, uh, it was, was later shown to be important um, when they looked at the chromosomal theory of inheritance uh, with the advent of, um, uh, with the improvement of uh, the microscope, they were able to see chromosomes. And, um, and from there, they, they found that um, uh, the behavior of chromosomes um, in, in uh, dividing cells, when you're talking, uh, sorry, uh, in, in, in reproductive cells, um, mimic what has been mentioned uh, by uh, Gregor Mendel uh, much, much about 30 years earlier. <coughs> um, this slide, on the other hand, talks about Friedrich Meischer, who uh, first discovered um, the contents of uh, pus from uh, uh, bandage of, of armies. I mean, it says, and found that he thought it was protein and uh, called it nuclein. Um, if you know the history of uh, genetics, you'll, you'll find that uh, in the 1900s was the time of the rediscovery of Mendelian uh, genetics uh, by three separate uh, scientists in three different parts of the world. I mean, scientists, when they find something, the first thing they do is they see whether other people have found uh, their work. And indeed, all these three found that uh, uh, Gregor Mendel has actually uh, published his work uh, on, on, on genetics. <coughs> this is the part where uh, Walter Sutton uh, found that the be behavior of chromosomes and reproductive cells mimic uh, and, and can explain what uh, Mendel was talking about in his Punnett Squares. I'm sorry, I need to just silent my phones. Um, so later, okay, now then we come to the part where they now understand that the factor or uh, the inheritance material is located within the nucleus and within inside the chromosome, but then which part of the chromosome? Because uh, further analysis on the chromosomes will show that um, chromosomes are actually made up of uh, histones and nucleic acids, proteins and nucleic acids. So which one is it? Um, there were, at that time, um, favorable arguments towards protein because simply because proteins are made, made up of um, a bigger number of building blocks. They have 20 amino acids while the nucleic acids has only about four uh, bases. And so they justified that, you know, to, to, make, to make an organism as complex as humans, you must have a uh, uh, um, bigger amount of building blocks and that's why they tend to favor towards proteins. And this is one when we come to uh, looking at the what are the evidences to support that uh, DNA is genetic material. And we can divide this into two parts. Perhaps this slide we're just going to talk about the indirect evidences uh, later. And the next slide we'll talk about direct evidences. One is the uh, specific location of DNA. Uh, in, although, although it was um, uh, the, this, this part of the this statement, the specific location is both supported by both um, direct evidence as well as indirect evidence. Uh, basically, it is mentioned that um, the what, what's important and what's always constant is DNA, and they are located within the, the nucleus. The nucleus is important. Um, next one is uh, content, constant DNA content. Again, when you look at different types of cells, uh, you will find that uh, the amount of protein and the, the types of protein that, are, that is available in each type of cell is quite uh, uh, variable, whereas DNA is always consistent, except for uh, some cells uh, that does not have any 
uh, nucleus, for example, the the red blood cells, uh, or if your muscle cells, we have multiple nucleus. You no, know, those, but but the content of each nucleus is still consistent, and so um, they they hold on to the fact that if it is genetic material, it must be very very consistent. It is also stable, and then this is the experiment I mentioned in class where they compare the absorption of, of uh, the effects of UV radiation on bacterial growth and mutation and they found that the highest there's a correlation between the highest the wavelength in which it has highest effect on the bacteria is the same wavelength that uh, that is highest uh, absorbed by by the DNA all right so these are the the, the indirect evidences to show that um, uh, to support that actually is DNA that is a genetic material and not protein um, direct evidence is always only available uh, much much later and they are defined by several steps of experiments okay so for that we'll move on to the next slide or the next file see you in the next file